This is copper sulfate hydrate. There is water trapped inside the crystal lattices of the copper sulfate crystals. That's actually what's making it blue. Different hydrates have different colors. Now we can drive the water out simply by heating it. So the purpose of this lab is to figure out two things. First, what is the percent by mass of the water in the hydrate? And what is the mole ratio of water to copper sulfate in the hydrate? Is it a monohydrate, a dihydrate, trihydrate, tetrahydrate, pentahydrate, hexahydrate, heptahydrate? How many moles of water are trapped for every mole of crystal? And that's what this lab is going to investigate today. So it's a very simple process. We're going to take our hydrate, copper sulfate, with n number of moles, this could be any whole number here, of hydrate. We're going to add heat, and it will turn from blue to grayish white, kind of an ash gray color. The water will have been driven out. So to find the percent of water, we take the mass of the water we drove out, and we divide it by the mass of the original hydrate. Easy enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to record the mass of an empty evaporating dish and then set the balance ahead by 2 grams. We're going to measure out the copper 2 sulfate hydrate with a microspatula into the evaporating dish until the balance evens out. You'll have exactly 2.000 grams of hydrated crystal. Place the dish on a wire gauze on a ring on a ring stand above a Bunsen burner flame. Ignite the flame and heat the dish containing the hydrate, stirring constantly with the microspatula to get rid of all the water until the blue color has disappeared and the powder in the dish is ash gray. Now, we want to make sure all the water is gone, so we're going to remove the dish and allow it to cool for two minutes. Then we're going to record the mass of the evaporating dish until the, uh, we're going to record the mass of the dish, and then we're going to place it back on the Munson burner flame and we're going to heat it and reweigh it and heat it and reweigh it and heat it and reweigh it until we get two masses that are identical. Because each time if we heat it and the mass goes down, that means there was still a little bit of water. Two readings that are the same mean there was no more water left to draw off. Now, copper 2 sulfate is, high, is very dangerous. It dehydrates the skin and the eyes, so whatever you do, make sure you keep goggles on at all times and wash your hands thoroughly before and after using the crystal. Of course, when you are doing a virtual lab, you don't have to worry about that. We are going to record the mass of the empty evaporating dish, the mass of the evaporating dish plus 2 grams of hydrate, that's just the first thing, plus 2, and then the mass of the evaporating dish and the anhydride after two subsequent identical mass readings, which means all the water has been driven out. Then you'll calculate the percent by mass of water in the hydrate and calculate your percent error. And then figure out the mole ratio of copper sulfate to water. And then you'll put that number here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever number you got here. And then there are some questions to answer, and then you're done with the lab. So let's go ahead and start the lab. The first thing we have to do is record the mass of the empty evaporating dish. So let's go ahead and do that now. Cue the music. Okay, now we have the mass of the dish. So, go ahead and read it off the balance. Okay, now we need to set the balance ahead by two grams. Ha, ha, done. Go ahead and record that as your second measurement. Now, obviously, the balance is not even, so we have to add enough of our hydrate for the mass to balance out. So I will use a microspatula to do that. Okay, now we have exactly two grams of hydrate, 2.000 grams of hydrate. Next up, we need to heat it up on a ring stand 
over a Bunsen burner. So let's do that. Safety checks for the Bunsen burner. Tug, tug, righty tidy, and make sure there's an air hole. Okay. Turn on the gas, make sure the needle valve is closed, strike the match, turn half a turn to the left. Beautiful. Okay, let's start heating. Now at this point, most of my students would say, isn't it done? Well, no, you still have, as you see, some powder blue. Now this is the same color as my very first car that I got from my grandfather. A 1974 Dodge Dart in powder blue. Six cylinder engine, only ran on five cylinders. Boy, that thing was a disaster. That car was absolutely incredible. But, because it's that color, we're not quite done heating yet. We have to keep going until we hit ash gray. about where it needs to be. So we're going to remove this from the heat and we're going to let it cool for two minutes and then we'll weigh it. Okay. Let's go ahead and record the mass. Okay, now I'm not going to actually record the mass. It doesn't really matter what the mass is. I'm going to heat it again, and then I will place it back on here and see if the mass changes. Rock a by a bedring dish with crucible tongs. If I am careful, nothing goes wrong. Okay, let's weigh it again. Rock a by fabric dish with the crucible tongs. If I am careful, nothing goes wrong. OMG, would you look at that? <laughs> it is exactly the same as it weighed before. I do not need to give it a second weighing. I have verified its mass. Woohoo! Am I good or am I good? Okay, so, so let's take a look at that mass, shall we? Notice it's not on the line. I don't want to see a zero at the end of this one. Okay, those are all the measurements you need to make. But for just for fun, what would happen if we added some water back into it? Whoa! Whoa! It's hard. It's rock solid. The crystal is not wet. It's absorbing that water back into its crystal structure again. Hard as a rock. And now I'm just going to dissolve it away so I can clean it up. Okay, go ahead and do your calculations. Isn't that pretty? Go ahead and do your calculations and then answer those questions. And thanks for joining me for this virtual lab. Till next time.